Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. We're going to look at section 5.4, which is solving equations with rational expressions. Hopefully we recall when solving equations, we can use the properties of equalities. What we do to one side, we can do to the other, uh, as long as we don't change the value of either side of the equation. We can only change its appearance and make an equivalent equation. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look at this one here. We have 5 twelfths x minus 2 thirds equals negative 7 twelfths x minus 5 6. Now, don't be uh, intimidated by all these fractions. We're going to solve this in two different ways. The first one is to just combine our x's to one side of the equation, like we would do if, these were, uh, with, if there weren't any fractions. We would just add 7 twelfths x to both sides or add this value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 7 twelfths x to this side so that this will cancel out. But using the properties of equality, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And now I can combine these 5 twelfths and 7 twelfths. Since they have the same denominator, that's convenient. We'll get 12 twelfths, which is just 1x. And I'm going to rewrite the rest of the problem. x minus 2 thirds equals negative 5 6. So it's looking a little nicer. Now I need to get x by itself. I'm going to add 2 thirds to both sides so that this cancels out. And it leaves me with x equals negative 5, 6 plus 2 thirds. Well, they don't have a common denominator. So I would have to make them a common denominator. So I'd have to multiply this one by 2 over 2. So I'd get 4 6. 4 6 minus 5 6 is negative 1 6. So we found the solution. And we could plug it back in and check it. But there's another method. And if you're intimidated by fractions, this is going to be a preferred method. Because of the property of equalities, what I can do is what I do to one side, I do to the other. I'm not changing the value. So let me erase all but the solution so we can see that the method we're about to look at works. To eliminate the fractions, we can use the property of equality and multiply through by the LCD. So the first thing we have to do is determine the LCD. Well, our denominators are 12, 3, 12, and 6. The least common denominator of these denominators is 12. If I multiply every term by 12, I'm using that property of equality. I'm going to multiply this entire side of the equation by 12 and this entire side of the equation by 12. And when I do that, I simply distribute 12 times 5 twelfths x. Well, the 12s cancel, leaving me with 5x. 12 times negative 3 halves, while 12 over 3 is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. Now we move to this side. 12 times negative 7 twelfths is negative 7x. 12 times negative 5 6, well, 12 over 6 is 2. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now it's essentially an equation without any fractions. And we've dealt with these many of times in the past. So I'm going to, get, again, get my x's together, add 7x to both sides. And then get the x by itself, add 8 to both sides. Then divide by 12 to get x a coefficient of 1. And I'm, well, let's show that step. Negative 2 over 12, since this reduces to 1x, negative 2 over 12 can also reduce. They have a common factor of 2. I get negative 1 6. And if we look at this and we look at this, we got the exact same value. So it doesn't matter which method you use, but sometimes clearing those fractions is going to be very beneficial using that property of equality, especially when we get into rational expressions where we have x's in denominators instead of just numbers. So let's look at some of those examples. Here I have 5x, or excuse me, 5 divided by x plus 1 divided by 6 equals 23 divided by 6x. So I want to clear these fractions because we have x's in denominators. But before I do that, I'm going to recall domain restrictions or restrictions. If x is 0, this becomes undefined, and that becomes undefined. So I know that x cannot equal 0. 
We do not want to divide by 0. So if I find a solution that says x is 0, I know that that's not a valid solution because of its restriction. All right, so let's go ahead and find the LCD. Well, we have a factor of x and a factor of 6. And a combination of those factors, my LCD would be 6x. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. If I distribute this, this term to this term, we end up uh, canceling the x's, which leaves me 6 times 5, which is just 30. 6x times 1 over 6, the 6 is reduced, and it leaves me with just an x. Here, the 6x cancels the 6x, leaving me with just 23. Well, that seems like a pretty simple equation now. I can subtract 30 from both sides, and I find x equals negative 7. The nice thing about equations is I can always check my work. And I didn't get 0, so I don't have to worry about a restriction. I can plug this value back in. So let's plug it in just to check our work. Negative 7 in here would give me negative 5 sevenths plus 1 sixth equals 23 over 6 times negative 7 would be 23 over negative 42, so negative 23 40 seconds. Well, let's see if this is true. In order to add or subtract fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So I'd have to give this a 6 over 6 and this one a 7 over 7 to get that common denominator of 42. So I get negative 30, I'll write it over here, over 42 plus 7 over 42. Does that equal negative 23 over 42? Well, negative 30 plus 7 is, in fact, negative 23 over that common denominator of 42. It's a true statement. So I know x equals 7 is my solution to this equation with rational expressions. All right, let's move on to the next example. Here, we don't just have an x. We actually have the difference of x and 5, x minus 5 here. And if we look, that's the only thing I have in denominator. So that is my LCD. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Multiply by that common denominator. And when I do that, I distribute it to this first term here. The x minus 5 would cancel, leaving me with just 3x. When I distribute it to the next term, I'd have 2 times this quantity. I have to distribute it. So I get 2x minus 10. 2 times x, 2 times negative 5. Here, the denominator here cancels. x minus 5 over x minus 5 reduces to 1 times 4x is just 4x. And now I have a simplified equation that I can solve. Well, I can combine like terms. 3x and 2x is 5x. But I want to get my x's on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 4x's from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 1x minus 10 equals 0, because 4x minus 4x is 0. Something has to be left on that right side. And now I can add 10 to both sides, and I get x equals 10. So let's go ahead and check our work here. Go back to the original equation and plug in that value. 3 times 10 is 30. 10 minus 5 is 5. Plus 2 equals 4 times 10 is 40. 10 minus 5 is 5. So 30 divided by 5, well, that's 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 40 divided by 5 is also 8. 8 equals 8 is a true statement. So I know I have the right answer. Always check your work. All right, if we look at this one here, it looks a little bit more complex. One thing we have to do is determine that domain. If we look at uh, any restrictions here, the first thing we'd have to do is factor. And hopefully, we recognize this as the difference of squares, because 9x squared is the square of 3 times x. And 1 is a perfect square of 1 times 1. So I'm going to factor this 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1. Now, to determine the LCD, we just have to say, well, what are our factors? I have 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. Those two factors are the LCD. 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation 
buy my LCD. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, <clears throat> when I multiply it by this side, the 3x plus 1's would cancel, leaving me with 3x minus 1 times 1. Well, that's just 3x minus 1. If I multiply these two factors times here, well, since this factored to those two factors, the whole thing would cancel, leaving me with just 2. And then when I multiply this term by this LCD, these two factors, the 3x minus 1's would cancel, and it'd leave me with negative 1 times 3x plus 1. I actually have to distribute that negative 1. Don't make a sign error. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Now I have no more fractions. I'm ready to combine like terms, get my x by itself. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides and combine this value. 2 minus 1 is just 1. So I have 6x minus 1 equals 1. Add 1 to both sides. 6x equals 2. Divide both sides by 6. x equals 3. <clears throat> now, if we look at this, x equals 3, we could plug it back in. Or excuse me, divide by 6, I'd get 1 third, 2 over 6. Excuse me, I wrote it's reciprocal. 1 third. Well, the first thing I should have done was determine what is my restriction. I cannot divide by 0. And if we look at this here, what would make this value 0? My LCD. If any part of this is 0, then it would be undefined. So what are my restrictions? Well, if this one is 0, I cannot have negative 1 third. All right? And actually, I should write it right here. That would be a restriction. x equals negative 1 third. Or x equals positive 1 third. Well, if I look at my solution, I got 1 third. That's a domain restriction. x cannot be 1 third, so I have to disregard this solution. If I were to plug it in to find if it works, I'd actually find that this value would be 0, and this value would be 0. I'm dividing by 0. It's undefined. This problem has no solution. That is the answer, no solution. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is proportions. Proportions are just when we have a ratio, which is something divided by another something. Maybe they have units, maybe they don't. In this case, we're just dealing with numbers. And this is one we should be familiar with. A ratio of 1 fourth set equal to another ratio is what we call a proportion. By definition, it is a ratio equal to another ratio. When we have that, if we look at this, 1 is to 4 as 2 is to 8. Well, that's a true statement. If we think one car has four tires, maybe we're applying some units, then two cars would have eight tires. That's a true statement. That is a proportion. Now, when it comes to solving equations that contain proportions, we can do it just as we did before. We could determine the LCD and multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. Let's do that first, and then we'll look at another method. Here, we have 3 and 39 as our denominators. Our LCD would be 39. So I'm going to multiply this side by 39 and this side by 39. And what we'll see happen here is 39 times 1 third. Well, 39 divided by 3 is 13. And here, the 39 would reduce to 1, 1x. One we just solved for x by multiplying through by the LCD. So x equals 13. I could plug that in and see if it's a true statement. 1 is the 3, as 13 is the 39. 13 over 39 would reduce to 1 third, so it's a true statement. The other method that we can use only works with proportions. So you have to make sure you're working with a proportion before you attempt this method. And it's called the cross product. What we can do is cross multiply the denominator of one side times the numerator of the other, and the denominator of the other side times the numerator of the other. And if we do that, 39 times 1 is 39. 3 times x is 3x. Now notice there's no more fractions. So we have 39 equals 3x. We'd simply just solve for x, divide both sides by 3. That reduces to 1x. 39 divided by 3 is 13. We get the exact same solution, which we've already checked and we know it's true. <clears throat> when we have 
proportions that are a little more complex because of their polynomials, sometimes using the cross products is the easier way to go. So that's what I'm going to do here. 3 times the numerator of x plus 1. And I have to distribute here 3 times x and 3 times 1. And then the denominator of x plus 2 times the numerator of 5. I, again, I have to distribute. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is 10. Now I'm ready to solve this. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And of course, to get x by itself, I have to undo that multiplication. I'm going to divide by 2. And I get negative 7 halves equals x. <clears throat> I can always check my solution by going back to the original problem and plugging it in. Negative 7 halves plus 1 over negative 7 halves plus 2 has to equal 5 thirds. Well, here we have a bit of a complex fraction. And if we recall, in the previous video of complex fractions, we simplified this using one of two methods. I'm going to multiply all these terms by the common denominator of 2. 2 times this would be negative 7. 2 times that would be 2. 2 times negative 7 halves would be negative 7. 2 times 2 is 4. So now I could say negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. Is negative 5 thirds, this side of the equation, equal to 5 thirds? A negative over a negative is positive, so this would be 5 thirds. This solution worked out when I checked my answer. And I used some of the tools that we learned in the previous section to simplify that. All right, let's look at an application. And maybe um, if we've traveled anywhere, and maybe before the days of GPS, we actually had to use a road map. And on every road map is a little scale to the lower right-hand side, usually, or upper left-hand side, or wherever it may be on that map. So here we have an application where, on a map, 1 inch equals 5 miles. What is the distance represented by 6 inches? So maybe we're looking at this map, and the key says 1 inch is 5 miles. This is a ratio. Now we want to know what is the distance on that map represented by 6 inches. Well, we can set it up as a proportion. We make sure that our units make sense if I have inches in the numerator here, I have to have inches in the numerator there. It's called dimensional analysis. If I have miles, oh, miles in the denominator, I need miles in the denominator. So I set up my proportion with the question, what is the distance represented by 6 inches? 6 inches is how many miles? Well, now I can use that cross product method that we looked at before. I can say x times 1 inch is <coughs> x, 1 times x. And 5 times 6 is 30. And if we look at this, x represents 30. Well, 30 what? Well, let's go back to this where we put in our dimensions. x has units of miles, so x equals 30 miles. So 6 inches on our map corresponds to 30 miles of distance. All right, I have two more uh, problems here. And I want you to attempt them yourself. Here we have a proportion, a fraction equal to a fraction. You can use whatever method you decide to solve that, whether you multiply through by the LCD or use the cross product. Here we have uh, an equation, uh, rational expressions here. Find the LCD, multiply through, simplify. Be aware of any domain restrictions. So this has been section 5.4, solving equations with rational expressions. Thank you for watching.